Hey guys, it's Dangani and I love Nintendo. Nintendo has obviously hugely inspired me with their memorable games, great characters, and interesting and fun worlds. Nintendo has always proudly been different from other industry-leading competitors, focusing on quality games first and foremost. Sometimes a little too much because it feels like they forget about the hardware side of things. This is my fourth pair of Joy-Cons, Nintendo. Nintendo, they keep drifting! It's the Nintendo charm, knowing that Nintendo puts this kind of care and love into their games, and it makes them so likable as a company. But because today, Nintendo is such a massive company with so many games being released under their belt, the Nintendo charm can somewhat be scattered in various games at times. Like, who thought one 2 switch was worth $60? I just want to talk, have a nice cup of tea, and then slap the tea out your hand because that is not a $60 game. Some games are filled with the Nintendo charm, some games have a sense of it but lack in other qualities, and some games just don't have it at all. I recently talked about the Paper Mario series and how it has transformed from a Mario RPG into a Mario game with a gimmick. And aside from making me upset internally for about four hours, it made me realize that although I miss the amazing story, gameplay, and characters from the series' earlier games like Thousand Year Door, it's probably a bit unhealthy to just be counting down the seconds until the next game in the series is released to potentially be disappointed even more. And along with that, I've been playing a decent amount of indie games lately too. I recently beat Celeste, which I ranked one of my favorite games of all time. Like, please play Celeste, it is so good, man. I've also been playing incredible indie games like Hollow Knight, A Hat in Time, Dead Cells. I'm also very bad at Dead Cells. Whenever you die, the game restarts, then I ask myself why am I so bad at video games? Soon enough, I picked up another game called Bug Fables. Now, the thing about Bug Fables is that it initially caught a lot of people's eyes because it was an apparent quote-unquote spiritual successor to the older Mario games. I mean, just from looking at it, you can tell it screams Paper Mario aesthetic. Because of the disappointment with the newer Paper Mario games, and of course, a lot of fans that missed that style of game that had a great story, great characters, an interesting world, Bug Fables seemed like an interesting game. When I first saw it being shown off, honestly, I didn't think too much of it. I was just like, oh, that's cool, and then continued to scroll through my random anime girls full timeline. The bug theme didn't really interest me too much, and I just didn't know a lot about it. But as time went by, I kept on hearing amazing things about the game, and recently it just released on the Nintendo Switch, hence why I picked it up. Bug Fables is amazing. It's literally everything I've missed from the Paper Mario games, and more. I did not expect to get so invested in these characters and the world and everything because I, I don't know these characters, they're bugs, why, why would I care? I must protect them. I care because you can see the passion put behind this game, it's the indie charm. It's the same feeling when I first played those Nintendo games that I grew up on. With a company as big as Nintendo today, sometimes it can feel hopeless for the community when something is lost that the fans really enjoyed. I'm sorry mother fans, I could only imagine what you're going through. Regardless of what the new Paper Mario game is about, whether it has a thoughtful battle system, no matter if it has an amazing story or not, it is going to sell no matter what. Paper Mario is a pretty niche series in the grander scheme of Nintendo so the upset core fans is pretty minuscule. But indie developers are people that have passion. You don't just make an indie game for no reason. It's incredible how small indie teams are. They create games that are on par or even excel their inspirations. Indie developers and teams are nothing but inspiring because they're often a very small team with super limited resources compared to a company like Nintendo. And I think the amount of indie teams and devs are only gonna grow as time goes on. It shows that anyone can make an amazing game and I'm sure it's incredibly rewarding as a developer to see your game just kill it. Making an indie game from the ground up is no easy task regardless and I hugely applaud any developer going for it. Nintendo is going to continue releasing amazing games, but as some series get left behind, indie developers will be inspired to make successors with fun new ideas and twists. And I encourage people to be inspired by any media to make anything. I love seeing people follow their creative passion, and when it's a game? Oh, it's over! Nintendo is undeniably kind of bad at understanding what fans want at times, but I'm happy that so many people have the opportunity to make incredible stuff. It obviously takes a lot of hard work and passion, but it pays off. Quality indie games that have that indie charm today is pretty similar to that Nintendo charm that made those older games so special. Nintendo has been super inspirational with their games, and it's awesome to see that there are people that were inspired by these games that I've played during my childhood that make stuff that is filled with nostalgia, charm, and passion. I hope to see in the future that some of these bigger companies continue to further support indie developers with tools and opportunities to make their game more accessible and known. The most difficult thing for any creator is to get your project out there, so I really applaud what Microsoft has done with their Xbox Live Creators program. It gives indie developers an opportunity to self-publish their games. 
And Nintendo has been giving a lot of love to indie developers as well lately. Within the past couple years, they have been doing the Indie World Directs, and that just is a huge showcase to indie developers. Without a doubt, the biggest thing that I love about YouTube is having creative freedom over what I want to make, for better or for worse. But I imagine that's how indie developers want their games to be. With AAA games, the development team is so huge that there are so many filters that a game goes through before being released. And when big companies who like money find a formula that works, they decide to just keep releasing the same game with minor changes. Indie games are very different from AAA games for this reason. There's a lot more creative freedom so the ideas from indie games can be really interesting and unique. I grew up loving games like Little Big Planet because it encouraged creativity. From what I thought, I was able to make my own games basically and I loved it. And that brings me to my next game, known as Dreams. The creators of Little Big Planet Media Molecule finally came out with their newest game after nearly a decade of development. And that game is Dreams. Currently, it's only a PS4 exclusive, but Dreams is less a game and more of a video game development kit. An incredible video game development kit. The learning curve is honestly pretty steep. Like, what does this mean? But it's absolutely mind-blowing how powerful it is. Dreams has garnered a tight-knit community of passionate, creative people who are all actively working on games. People who have never touched anything game dev related are making full-on games, and it's so goddamn cool. There are also people developing masterclass games, such as Wario Dice in a Car Accident, but that's a whole nother conversation. Now, the biggest setback for Dreams is that the games can only be played within Dreams, which you need a PS4 since it's exclusive. But the developers have talked about making the games within Dreams exportable into their own thing. And if Dreams gets to the point where you could actually use these powerful tools to export and publish your own game as a true indie game available on various platforms, so much is gonna go down, man, and I hope we see something like that. Dreams has only been out for like less than half a year, so I'm really excited for the future of it. Back to my original point where I talk about Nintendo versus indie developers. The reason I brought up Nintendo to begin with is because I love the passion at Nintendo. When you play a game that has that passion and care put into it, you can feel it. And that's what indie games are like. I'm very happy to see companies supporting indie developers, and I do think that indie is only going to continue to grow. Don't get me wrong, Nintendo is still going to release banger games, but I also recommend if you want to pick up a game that has that same level of passion, I recommend looking at some well-rated indie games. Um, anyway, I'll see you guys in my next video where I'm talking about something video game related. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you're epic. Also, Nintendo, please fix your hardware. My Switch kickstand kept attaching, so I super glued it on, and now I can't use it.